Is it a struggle? Yes, we have to realize our strengths and our weaknesses. Hi, and welcome to Why Why Not, and I'm your host, Janice. Um, our goal here today is to help others to reach their goals by providing them important information that's going to get them from here to there. And great, today we have a great topic in the studio, a great topic for the show. It is courtroom tips. And I have a wonderful guest in the show. Um, she is Judge-Elect Taisha Smith. Um, and hopefully when this airs, uh, she would already have been uh, sworn in and she will be the Honorable Judge Smith. Okay, welcome to the show, um, Taisha. How are you? All right, thank you, Janice, for having me. Thank you. I'm, I'm so happy that you came on the show. I have lots of questions to ask you uh, about um, how people should act in the courtroom. Some people, I hate to say it, don't know how to act. Unfortunately, I've been in the court before and I've seen some people that are like, oh, I don't think you're supposed to act like that. Right. Even I, me, go I ahead. think it's I think it's between don't know how to act or just don't want to act the appropriate way. So correct, <laughs> correct. Now, um, you just got elected. This is the 2020 um, election that just passed. Um, can you just give us a little background about yourself and why did you decide to become a judge or run? Oh well, Janice. So um, I. I'm currently an assistant public defender right now. So I represent um, indigent people. That means I represent people who are charged with criminal offenses who cannot afford an attorney. Mm -hmm. And so the judge appoints our office to represent them. Mm -hmm. So I've been an assistant public defender for 10 years now. Um, and being a public defender, I saw a lot of things that I wasn't satisfied with, I wasn't happy with. And I realized that um, at the end, the judge usually have the final determination. And so I wanted to do more. So I decided to run to become a judge. Wow, yeah, excellent, excellent. I mean, I know um, the court system is gonna enjoy having you. Um, you're very wise and you are fair. You're one of the fairest people I know. So I'm very happy that you are going to be a judge. Um, Thank you. I hope I can um, hold up to your high standards of me. <laughs> yes, I have very high standards for you. Now, that's another thing I want to ask. Now, you're on one level. How do the levels of being a judge work? I mean, there's different levels of courtship. Yes, it is. Uh, so the position I ran for is to be a four circuit judge um, in, the, uh, in the state level. So I will be a Cook County um, circuit court judge. And so higher, the one step higher than the circuit court judge then is the appellate court. Mm -hmm. And then after the appellate court is the um, Illinois Supreme Court. And then after this Illinois Supreme Court, then there's the United States Supreme Court. And what I mean by that is that if I make a decision in my courtroom that say for instance, Janice, you're not happy with, then the only way you can get that decision overturned is a, by appealing to the appellate court. So that's what I mean by the Illinois appellate court. Now, are all these three levels across the state, uh, like even in California or New York, do they still have the circuit, the appellate, and the Supreme Court also? Yes, 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 yes. So um, usually... Um, and the district court usually is the Illinois, um, like Illinois Supreme Court, and it's, it's different districts. Districts, mm -hmm. and um, so like Illinois in the fellow in the felony, um, excuse me, and the federal part of it, um, it encompasses like Illinois. Some parts of Indiana will fall up under a certain district, okay. so they're broken into districts for each state. Mm -hmm. So they um, kind of merge together. Okay. And that's when they get to the Supreme Court more or less level of the state. Right. But so not all cases go there. So okay. you don't, just because you're not happy with my case, 
you you you're entitled to appeal within 30 days any uh final decision you're entitled to appeal it now whether or not it gets overturned on appeal that's a different story um right. and the judges it, excuse me it's up to the judges to decide if that you get right to one. if okay. i made a bad decision for example when i become a judge then mm -hmm. if you don't like my decision you have to appeal the appeal to the appellate court if the appellate court still says um, we agree with her, then your next step will be the Illinois Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And then if the Illinois Supreme Court says, I still uh, agree with, you know, the Honorable Taisha Smith, mm -hmm. then at that point, you have to do a writ of certiorari um, in order for the uh, Illinois, not the Illinois, in order for the United States Supreme Court. Wow. Okay. I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of steps to get up. And that's in every state if you want to take your case and keep going up and up and up, you know? Yes. Um, I wish I researched it, but I didn't for the show. I'm curious um, on how many um, cases actually get to the Supreme Court and how long the process, I would think it takes like years to even get to the Supreme Court. Yes, it does. It does. It's not a over, it's not an overnight process. It's not an overnight process. So um, a lot of people aren't happy with their decisions that the lower courts make. So mm -hmm. there is a process to even get there and it does take time. That's why you, you see people 10 years, been in prison for 10 years before their conviction is overturned because it's a process, it's not overnight. Okay. Wow, I didn't know I could actually, I mean, I guess I do hear about those stories of people saying they've been appealing, appealing for years, but it's like, wow. Yes. To keep going years and years and years, you have to really be serious about something that you know that you want this turn to keep going on and on and on. Yes. Even with the cost. Now, um, on a, Judge Elect Smith, um, yes. you're going to be starting off in traffic court. Yes. Okay. Now, um, I wanted to actually talk to some talk to you about some questions about even how to present yourself in court, courtroom yeah. tips. Um, I know you can have a lawyer at every step of the way, but when it comes to traffic court, a lot of people handle it themselves. That's correct. Is there a way that you should even present yourself to the judge? I mean, can you just wear anything you want to wear? No, there's no, there's usually a, a, a dress code. Uh, you should come to court, um, especially if you want to represent yourself. You should appear professional. Um, and there is a lot of courtrooms that prohibit um, litigants from coming into court with tank tops, flip flops, um, certain things that you cannot come into the courtroom with. Um, it's usually is up to the judge's discretion, but most judges require you to dress in an appropriate way and wear tank tops, pajamas lingerie stuff like that is inappropriate to court unfortunately people do it but it's not an appropriate way to look in court okay yeah i've actually been in the court and someone was definitely wearing the after 11 lingerie and it was like mm. so the whole uh, the whole i won't say audience but everyone there in the courtroom was just quiet and the judge did say something yes okay. was that even hurt your case that way well you know it depends on, like in traffic, no, because as judges, we're supposed to be impartial. So right. we're yeah. supposed to look at the law mm -hmm. and apply the law to the facts of your case. So however you come into court dress um, should not affect a decision. It's not supposed to affect the decision of your case. Your case should only be um, judged upon merits and that's it and that's all. Now, if you have a jury trial and you're charged with certain offenses and then you come to court, like say for instance, you're charged with some type of gang offense and you come to court and you got on a, a baseball cap and you just looking very inappropriate. Now they might hold that against you okay. as a jury because you're a triad of people of your peers. But as a judge, how you look in the courtroom should not at all decide the merits of your case. Right. Now you as a public defender, um, did you tell your clients definitely, I don't know what division you were working in, 
Um, but did you tell your clients definitely dress appropriately? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm, I'm in the felony trial division. So Ooh. I handle cases, um, felony cases, everything from um, theft to attempt murders, um, sexual assault cases. Mm -hmm. um, I have handled um, a murder before. And I tell my client to come to court and dress appropriately. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, when it's time to get ready to go to trial, I often dress my clients. Oh, wow. Because some people are poor. I represent poor people. So um, some people actually cannot afford to come to court and look appropriate. So mm -hmm. with that being said, we have a closed room mm -hmm. and we go and we usually measure our clients. And sometimes I've went out and actually bought my clients um, mm -hmm. clothes to wear to court on trial dates, especially if it's a, it's a, if it's a jury trial. Wow. Yeah, that's actually excellent. That's nice of you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Because I would think, yeah, if you're dressing appropriately and you're having a jury trial, I mean, regular people are, I hate to say it, they'll judge you for what. Yes. They yes. Think. Yes, definitely. And that's why, you know, I, we dress our clients, mm -hmm. you know, I, it's to the point I have even did makeup for mm -hmm. some of my clients who have tattoos because mm -hmm. I don't want the jury to judge them based on how they how they look and not the evidence. Correct. So I try to make them look as presentable as possible. Okay. Yeah, I guess um, covering up tattoos would help also because people judge you differently when you have a tattoo. Even if it could be a tattoo of honoring your mother or something or a uh, right. child that you lost, they're still seeing right. a tattoo and they're gonna judge you differently. Well, Janice, most of the tattoos I cover up are the tattoos on the face because oh, I didn't yes, <laughs> yes. So um, if they have tattoos on their arms and stuff like that, I always have them. Of course, with long sleeve shirts, mm -hmm. stuff that can cover it up. Now they have tattoos on their hands. Sometimes I'll tell them to keep their hands under the table mm -hmm. so that the jury will not see anything that would um, that they'll hold against my client. Oh, okay. Now, I know um, you're going to be um, your judge elect right now, and you are a public defender. How do you even tell um, for people representing themselves or you're representing, how are they supposed to react in court? Like, do they raise their hand? Do you want them to be quiet? Even if they're representing themselves, how are they supposed to present themselves to a judge? How do you direct your client to? Well, it's, it's two different things. Uh, a client that represents himself um, is held to the same standards as if I will be held representing them. Okay. So if you're representing yourself, you don't get any pass because you represent yourself and you may not be fully aware of the law. When you decide to represent yourself, you decide to take on that responsibility. Mm. So if you're representing yourself, then you should um, respect the courtroom as if I will respect the courtroom. Uh, when my clients are in court, I tell my clients to not directly speak to the judge. Anything they want to say should come directly through me mm -hmm. because sometimes they can say things that's not in their best interest. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes okay. they can say things that could be held against them at trial. That helps um, them in a court of law thing. That they always right, do. right. So before my clients wishes to speak to the judge, I would ask them to tell me exactly what they want to say. And if I think it's appropriate and the judge is okay with them speaking to him or her, then I allow them to do so. Okay. So definitely in my opinion, for certain, my opinion, for certain, depending on what you're going to court for, it is probably best to get an attorney to represent you versus you don't have any clue what you might say might be the wrong thing or held against you. You know what they say, Janice, that uh, uh, a client who represents himself has a fool. Well, an attorney who represents himself has a fool for a client. Yeah. So <laughs> yes, they don't say that for anything. Right, right. Now, with traffic court, you normally don't need someone just for a ticket, though, at least. Um, criminal court, yeah, I wouldn't represent myself for anything like that if I had. Okay, see this, see... It's not interchangeable. You're using the words as if, right. Uh, certain offenses in traffic are criminal offenses. Oh, okay. Yeah. DUI, 
that's a criminal offense. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, reckless driving, that's a criminal mm -hmm. offense. Um, and so that's there all are, a traffic court too? They, they yes. Say, oh, I, I don't know why I didn't think about that. I'm yes. always thinking of just the ticket. The yes. parking, speeding ticket, okay. Right, no, no. So it's not just speeding tickets. It's, it's, it's all forms of traffic. Okay. And you, you have to also understand, you say, oh, I'm just going to court for a traffic ticket. But if you get found guilty of running a red light stop sign, you got to think sometimes it, it affects your insurance rates because now you have these tickets. So although your liberty is in a state, your finances okay. may possibly be. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I have been to traffic court before, unfortunately. And yeah, I do recall seeing a couple people were nicely escorted by sheriffs and I didn't understand. I'm like, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't speed anymore. If that's going to happen. Right. And then you have to think about people who uh, drive, don't have the privilege of driving. If your license is suspended and you get pulled over and you are not supposed to be driving, that's a criminal offense. Okay. That. And in traffic court, um, there are certain levels too of um, traffic because okay. you can have someone who's charged with a misdemeanor DUI mm -hmm. in traffic court. And then you can have someone who's charged with a felony DUI. So mm -hmm. there are different uh, levels to traffic offenses. Okay. Oh yeah, I, I actually did that even pay attention. I guess I'm just used to, I think of traffic court. And this is why I wanted to talk to people about um, different things because people like me, I mean, I can say I'm kind of ignorant to these things. I right. didn't realize that there's other more defenses compared to I blew the red light or something like that. And that's what traffic court comes in that you're even dealing with criminal traffic um, moving violations or offenses. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. You, you blew the stop sign, but you're not supposed to be driving. So you have a um, driving on a revoke or suspended license mm -hmm. and running a stop sign. So I deal, I'll be dealing with all aspects of that in traffic court. Okay. Unless it's a felony traffic offense, then it will go to the felony courtroom. Okay. So, and that's countrywide. That's how it goes for traffic court. You can actually do criminal cases like um, traffic violations like that in the courtroom. Yes, as okay. far as I know of. Okay, for most part, that we know of. Okay. Yes. Wow, because I was always sitting there, and I one time I was in court. Unfortunately, I did win my case, um, <laughs> but uh, you one oh. of those clients, huh? Janice, represent yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I represent myself, and it's like I didn't even know how to address the judge. I'm like, Your Honorship, you know, Your Lordship. I didn't even know how to in introduce myself or how to address him. You know. And I'm sitting there shaking as a leaf, even with paperwork. It's like you have to go up to the court with paperwork. A lot of people don't know you really need to have a couple copies, I'm assuming. It's, it's a, yeah, it's a scary thing. It's a scary thing, especially for someone who doesn't know the process. So it is a scary thing. And for like a stop sign, um, you're not entitled to an attorney. But for um, criminal offenses, you are entitled. So if you, if your license wasn't valid and you're looking at any type of jail time, then you are entitled to a public defender. You're entitled to an attorney if you cannot afford one. Okay. No, mine wasn't that involved, but even that having a driver's license would be more of a felony? That's no, it's not a felony. Oh. If you don't have a, a, a regular driver's license, it depends. Oh. Like- Okay. They suspend your driver's license for just, for example, a DUI, and then you go and you drive, right? Right. Um, you're driving on a suspended or a revoked license. Right. So that becomes a criminal offense. Really? Now, it depends on how many times you've been caught not driving without a license and exactly why your license is suspended. So there's different things that can make it be from a misdemeanor to a felony offense. Oh, wow. Just yeah. for something of a $30, get your license or in a different state, maybe a hundred bucks, who knows? And it's like, you could possibly go to jail or be criminally charged for driving yeah. a suspended license. 
usually when people are facing some type of, uh, it's usually their license is suspended or revoked for like a statutory period, maybe like three months, six months, it all depends. For a DUI or too many, they suspend your uh, license for yeah. too many uh, speeding tickets or moving violations within a certain period of time, they could suspend your license. And if you drive while your license is suspended, then you're looking at criminal charges. But it's not like, uh, I didn't go get my license renewed. That's a difference. Oh, yeah. I was referring to, you know, how people just, I, I've known people that have driven without their license for quite some time to revoke. And I never thought it could go to that higher of a level. I, you know, it just, I just figured it would be a higher fine. Okay, instead of the $100 ticket, now it's a $1,000 ticket. Not that it could go to a higher level of yeah. punishment, shall I say. Or, yeah, um, yeah wow, wow. Now, like, I was even wondering, like, when I'm in court before, is there, like, I know sometimes on the ticket will give you a price. For different offense, is there like set each state in each court? Do there's a set range for like if you had a parking ticket, it's like between the 50 and 500. Is there a range at all? I mean, a judge can't say you ran that light 10 grand, right? He can't just go crazy, can you? Well, you know, usually, um, usually there are statutory fines and fees. Oh, okay. And um, you could get a uh, you can have a parking violation in the city of Chicago and they give you a ticket, of course, for like $50. But usually those things, a lot of times are municipal. So don't get it confused. You'll go to like the municipal court. When you go to traffic court, it's for running, uh, it's for a moving violation. Oh, so okay. usually when you go to court for that is if they say you ran a red light, if they say you were uh, driving without insurance on your car. Um, so some type of active thing. It's not for like parking tickets and that type of stuff. You usually go to the municipal. That doesn't invoke you to go to a, a criminal court, criminal traffic court or regular traffic court. Okay. Now you mentioned the municipal court. Are those, I won't, I hate to say it, but are those, they're actual courts though, right? Or are they not? I mean, I hate to say it, I am very layman. I don't know how the court system works. Are those still- Yes, they're, they're actually courts. They're the courts that when you don't cut your grass and they come over and give you a $50 ticket, okay. that's a municipal court. It's a court that uh, keeps order within their municipalities. Mm. So yes, they are. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. You're not looking at jail time. You're just looking at your, your money- yeah, right. your money. Yeah, That's definitely. their goal to finance their community. Yeah. Now and I know it looking nice. Yes, keep it nice. Correct. Okay. I, I didn't know. I know I've heard about municipal courts, but I never had to go in there for that either. That's why I was curious. I didn't know if that was part of like county, but no, like you said, it's municipal. It's just your town court. Yeah. So that would kind of be like the lower, the smaller court would be the town court. Okay. Yes. Um. Now, cause I know when I represented myself in court for my traffic ticket, I mean, it is very nerve wracking and it's very nervous. I mean, I hate to say it, I'm gonna give self-disclosure. I had sweat stains from my armpits all the way down to my hips. I was sweating that much. I was just, didn't know what to do. <laughs> because you, some of these fines could be a thousand dollars or something, you know, um, uh, running a red light, you have no clue and you wanna win your case. So how do you even address a judge? Is it judge or is it honorable? How do you- um, it, could be, it could be either or, your honor, um, judge. Mm -hmm. It could be either or. It's, I don't think it's between those two is no right or wrong way. You know, when I'm in court is I use judge, but either or is, is, is if, how do I want to sign when I become a judge, the honorable or a judge? So it's either either way is appropriate. Okay. Do you have to raise your hand? You should raise your hand because other than that, you're interrupting the court proceedings. Um, different judges run their courtroom different ways. Some judges, they make you check in with the clerk all at once. Some judges, you check in as you come in. So it all depends on how that particular court, um, particular judge runs his or her courtroom. Okay, and we have a few more minutes left. How about even waiting for your turn to speak to the judge? 
Um, what is the demeanor that they're expected to have while sitting down waiting and things like that? Uh, no reading in a courtroom. So you can't bring your book. You're not supposed to read in a courtroom. You're not supposed to chew gum in a courtroom. You're not supposed to eat in a courtroom. You're not supposed to talk in a courtroom. And some judges will not even allow your children to be in a courtroom. Wow. Okay. Yes. So even children, you shouldn't yes. bring your children. And it's probably best not to, just all the people that are around. It's best not to, but you know, some people, if you're dealing with poor people, don't have a babysitter. Right. So it's between the two. Either I come to court or and bring my child or I don't come to court and get a warrant. Right. Now, um, are they still conducting court now during COVID or um, during the pandemic? Yes, courtroom is still going on, just like we're doing this meeting through Zoom. Um, they are having courtroom through Zoom. Wow. Okay. Yes. So court, yes, it's still going on. Now, even with that, I have a few minutes. I mean, would you be sworn in even online? I mean, would video actually count? Yes, I will be. Uh, if it wasn't pre-pandemic, we used to, because um, I went to one of my friends who got sworn in. They usually get sworn in at the Thompson Center. Mm -hmm. And it's a big ceremony and guest speakers and all the judges who won their election get sworn in at the same time. But because of the pandemic, uh, we all will be getting sworn in through Zoom. Wow. So we got Zoom in the courtrooms. I yes. Guess. Yes. Okay. I'm well, looking forward to it, Janice. Yes. I am so happy for you. So happy for you. And I, I know the state and hopefully, you know me, I'm thinking federal level will definitely be looking forward to having you um, as a justice um, eventually and soon. I don't know, Janice. I'm, I'm right now. I'm, I'm just too happy right now. My glory to even think past that. But uh, maybe I should think like you. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm so happy that we have a new judge coming in our courtroom that is going to and understands um, being as a public defender the regular person's side of view. So I hate to say it, but I've seen a lot of judges that you know they've been um, prosecutors. So. I know you're supposed to be fair and biased, but some days, in my opinion, when you get a lot of prosecutors, they're used to, okay, that person's guilty. They're used to, unfortunately, in my opinion, their biases. Having a judge that actually understands the person that is being prosecuted or something, I really respect that because I know that Thank brings you. caring and understanding. Thank you. And and I that's exactly what I plan on doing. And I think not me being a public defender is the main reason is is how I grew up you know I grew up from humble beginnings and so I know what it is to be poor and so I plan on being fair to poor people any anyone actually yeah. not just poor people let's clear that up I plan yeah. on being fair and to impartial everyone. um to everyone correct and I know you will be well that wraps up our show this is why and why not our topic today was courtroom tips. And I wanna thank the judge elect, Kaisha Smith. And hopefully when this is aired um, in a couple of weeks, she will be the honorable judge Smith. That's what we're talking yes. about. Okay, thank, thank you, you. Very much, uh, for coming. Uh, watch us on Facebook um, and YouTube. And we're in quite a few um, cities around the country. Thank you very much and have a nice evening. You too, Bye -bye. thank you.